Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath day. Now, the title of this lesson is When the Saints Go Marching In, and it's really focusing on the army of God. See, we know we've heard that, you know, there's going to be a great battle of Armageddon and that there's going to be, you know, the saints of the most high are going to overtake the, 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 the kingdom and, and, and things like that. Right. And right there, that implies that the most high has an army. Right. Not just a legion of angels, not just legions and legions of angels, not just that, but saints will also be in battle at different points of time. Right. So we know that the most high, he has helped um, his people Israel. He fought their battles for them here on earth, right here, right? He's fought their battles. He's, he's strengthened their hand. He has delivered other nations into the hands of Israel. We also seen when the Most High, when he backs up from Israel, when he removes his hedge of protection, when he removes his hand from over Israel, they, they, they lose battles. They don't have them. But now what we're trying to do is we're talking about the end game when it's all over, when this is when th this is it. Right. We're talking about that. What is, what will it look like? Right. There's going to be points in times where the most high himself, he's going to come and the Messiah, he's going to come and fight the battle. We also know there's going to be times when his angels will be fighting and there's a time when his saints will be fighting. We just have to understand the timeline, when and where these things will take place. Now, we know that for the most part, most of this is going to take place right here on Earth. Coming to a planet near you, right? A lot of this is going to happen. The culmination of all this, the, the, the time of restoration, when everything is going to be made right. Right now, we live in a world of total confusion. Up is down, left is right. It, it, it's, 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 it's madness out there in this world right now. It is complete and utter madness. But guess what? All that's going to be turned around. You know, the Bible talks about when the day is coming, when people are going to call good evil and evil good and things like that. And isn't that what's going on right now? So, so we know we're, earing, we're, we're nearing the end. We know it is coming. We know that it, this is unfolding. We are nearing the end because all the things that the Bible said was going to happen, it is happening now and in a larger scale because oh i know i know the skeptics they'll be like well you know um people have been saying it's the end of the world like forever okay well it's closer now than ever before right we can at least say that and just all the things that we're doing to hasten the day that the messiah comes right now he's gonna come on his own time please make no mistake about it he's gonna come on his own time he's gonna come on his calendar and our job is to be ready. Because many of us as saints, whether you know it or not, many of us, we are enlisted in the army of God. So when the saints come marching in, which side will you be on? Will you be ready? Because everybody, they're getting caught up in this whole idea of, you know, Christ being Something akin to like a Santa Claus, just a, you know, nice, nicey, nicey, love everybody. Everyone keeps expecting the lamb. They keep expecting this lamb type person, right? This lamb personality. But isn't he known as the lamb and the lion, right? See, they already, you already got the lamb before. You got that, right? So we're mis, you're misunderstanding that when he comes back, it's not time for lamb. He's not coming to lay down his life. He did that. He's not coming to... To, 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 to tell everybody, oh, just love everybody. No, he's not doing that. He's coming over to flip over the proverbial 
tables. He's coming to clean house. See, people have this wrong idea. And then we got to be ready. They got this wrong idea of who the Messiah is. I don't know. But, but, but if you have the wrong one, then you're going to be you, you, you're preaching this, 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 this impossible Jesus, right? This beyond Jesus. I don't, know, I don't know what kind of imitation, but it's not the real thing. Okay? You got this non-GMO. I, I don't know what's going on. But, but this is not the Messiah that we're, this is not, the what you've been preached for, for, for like really the last centuries, okay? So what the, the Jesus you are getting from the Roman Catholic Church and from the Protestants is not the real Jesus. That's that impossible, that's that beyond, that's not the real thing. That's not the real lamb, okay? That's, this is not. And I'm gonna tell you, if you keep following these other people, okay, if you keep following these denominations and you keep following Rome, they're going to lead you astray and you're not going to be ready. Think about that for a second. Think about that for one second when the nations in the world, when, they, when they're going to come to make war with the lamb. Why would someone be fighting, ready to take up arms against the Messiah? It's probably because the idea in their mind is the wrong Messiah. So when the real one shows up, they're not gonna recognize him. They're not gonna, they're not gonna recognize him. And so they're gonna fight against him, or at least try to fight against him. And we know what their end gonna be. So let's look at when the saints gonna go uh, marching. We're gonna look at, you know, God's army. We're gonna look at some of those type of things, right? How, how this thing is gonna unfold. How, how, how are all, what does the Bible say about it? Right. So let's let's get right into it. Let's go to Psalm 68, Psalm 68 and 17, because we got to understand. OK, we know that our God is consuming fire. We know God is a man of war. We know that. Right. I mean, yes, I can preach the love part. But if I just give you one half of what the Messiah is or one half of what the Most High is, I am doing you a disservice. Oh, brother, let's just talk about the love. and all. OK, but. There's something coming. There's something coming. And it's not going to look or feel like love. So it's incumbent upon me to prepare you. Right? So let's get into it. Psalm 68 and 17. And it says here, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place, right? So we're looking at that in Psalm or Tehillim 68, 17, right? So we're looking at right there. He prepares his army. He has an army, thousands. He has thousands and thousands, a lot. And up to just the angels. But don't worry, we're going to get to where we as saints, where we come in, okay? We're, we're going to get to that, okay? Now let's move over to um, Revelation 17 and 14, right? 17 and 14. Now, I'm, now I'm reading from the King James, but I also want to look a little bit at some of the scriptures. So some of them I'll, I'll do a little bit of both um, for your listening pleasure. So I'm going to do 17 and I'm going to read it over here in the King James 17 and read verse 14. Verse 14 in the King James, it says this. It says, these shall make war with the lamb, right? These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them, right? So he's fighting, right? For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful, right? So we're going to look at it over in um, the scriptures version, right? And this over there in uh, uh, Hassan, right? They shall fight with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is master of masters and sovereign of sovereign and those with him are called and chosen and trustworthy okay so some of those so some of the people that's going to be with you know those with him the saints the saints of the most high when the saints go marching in you want to be counted as one of the number now don't get me wrong a lot of saints they're gonna have different jobs and you just may see some of that as we go through these scriptures. They have different jobs, but 
You need to be ready. You need to be accounted among the num You want to be on the winning side, brothers and sisters. Come on, Israel. You want to be on the winning side. So let's go to Revelation 19, right? We're still in the same book. But we're going to go to 19, chapter 19. And I'm going to start at 11. And this is in the King James. And it says, And I saw the heaven open, and there was a white horse. And he who sat on him was called trustworthy and true. And in righteousness, he judges and fights. In righteousness, he judges and fights. Now, this is uh, in the scriptures version. And his eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, having a name that had been written, which no one had perceived except himself. Which no one had perceived except himself. And having been dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of Yahweh. And the armies of the heaven dressed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Okay. Hmm. Wonder what that can be. Wonder, wonder, wonder who, I, I, I wonder. Because the angels, they have wings and they can fly. But the, you, let's keep going. Okay, we're going to look at it in the King James. Okay, 19 and 11, King James. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he sat upon him, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness... He doth judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Hmm. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Now, I'm going to go to Revelation 8 and the King James. Go to Revelation 8. And then, um, so we're going to see how this whole thing, you know, kind of kicks off, right? Revelation 8, and then I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. OK, so this there's not. OK, now there's a theme here. I want you to pay attention. There's a theme here. And we're talking about the trumpets. Right now, if you go look at my lesson uh, talking about the seven trumpets, seven trumpets, seven seals and things like that. Or when you look at the Feast of Trumpets, we know that it's like an announcement or a proclamation or, you know, the king is coming or there, there, there's a, a warning. Right. So we, we get an idea and we, we learn that from the scriptures. Right. Because we look at what it was. We look at where it says and then we look at what happens next. So blowing a trumpet is signaling something. Right. So I just want to give you an idea of the seven trumpets. Right. So now we're going to go to first Thessalonians in chapter four. All right. Now, a couple of things are going to happen. So let's follow along. Let the Bible speak. First Thessalonians four. And I'm going to start at verse 15. And 15 says this. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. We just talked about trumpets in Revelation and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So you're going to float into the air to meet the Lord in the air. So now you have people or his saints floating in the air, right? People are rising out of their graves, people who are, uh, that's those who are die, who are dead. And then those who are alive, when he shows up, they will also float, but they won't go before those who were dead, right? Because he has an order and a protocol. And he said to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? So we're going to look at this again. This is where uh, Shaul was talking about, uh, you know, the second coming, right? So he's talking about the second coming and what's it going to look like, stuff like that, right? But he also talked about it in 1 Corinthians. So let's look at it over there as well. So 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to look at verse 51, okay? 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. And he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. How many trumpets are there? Seven, right? At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, okay? From this corruptible mortal body into a glorified immortal 
body, right? And then he explains it over here in 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Immortality, right? So now, before we, so, so before we go to war, guess what's gonna happen? Your body gonna get changed, right? So how, so, so how do you think it's gonna turn out when you're gonna have an immortal Messiah, you're gonna have immortal angels, and you're gonna have immortal saints along with the along with the along with the Messiah going into war with the wicked, those who are destined to perish. How do you think that war is gonna turn out? If immortals are fighting mortals, all right. Let's go on over to Jude. Okay, and I'm going to start at verse 14 over there in Jude. I'm going to let that marinate a little bit for you guys, okay? We're going to look at Jude. Okay, at 14, read 14 and 15. And I just want to point something out. Watch this. It says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. He says saints or angels? Saints or angels, Right? With 10,000 of his saints, right? And I want to read uh, 15 as well, but let me look at something real quick. Because we're going to go, I'm going to go there just a second, okay? Okay, so we go to Yehuda here. Now, in 53, no, I'm sorry, what was that? 15, I'm sorry, 15. It says to, uh, and why, why is he going to do that? Why is the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints? to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So you gotta watch what you say, you gotta watch what you do. Cause look at what he's coming. He's coming with his army to rectify this thing. To turn this whole thing around. He's coming to execute judgment and make war. He's coming to judge the wicked. Which side of his army do you want to be on? Okay. So right here in Yehuda or Jude 14. Okay. So I'm going to read uh, 14 and 15. Okay. And I'm just, and I'm not gonna do it with all the scriptures. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna read both the scriptures and the King James. It's just a couple of times just to make a point here. Ehanak, and seventh, okay, and it says seventh from Adam. Uh, also prophesied of these, saying, "See, Yahweh comes with his, comes with uh, his myriads of set apart ones, to execute judgment on all, to punish all who are wicked among them concerning all their wicked works." which they have committed in a wicked way and concerning all the harsh words which wicked sinners have spoken against him. Do we have people out there speaking against him? See, this same type of people who are going to make war with the lamb. Now, it's not going to turn out very good for them, but they're going to go try to make war with the lamb because they're wicked. They're wicked sinners, right? But he knows how to deal with them, right? So again, Let's go ahead and move forward. First Thessalonians chapter three, and we're going to go to 13. See, we just keep it pushing. We just keep it pushing. All right. So you jot, the, jot the, all this down and then go or you can go to the uh, description box below and look and find the scriptures there. But we, 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 we keep it pushing in the scriptures. I want you guys to know what is it going to be like to be drafted in the Most High's army? What will it be like to be drafted in the Messiah's army? So I want, I, want, I want to give you an idea, right? So we talk a lot about the end times, okay? So in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 13, right? 1 Thessalonians 3 and 13, we're going to let the Bible speak, which says, To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach, with all his saints. 
With what? With all his saints. With all his saints. Now, he's going to do it with all his saints. Now, where is he going? Where are we going to be? For last, last time we checked, you, we're going to meet him in the air and we're going to be with him forever, right? So as I always do, I always, I bring you up into the air and I bring you right back down. And he said we're going to be with him. So the best thing for us, the obligatory question should be, where is he going? Right? So let's go on over to uh, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. And we're going to read 4 and 5. So let's let the Bible speak. Which says, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. See, that's when he comes back. That's when he comes back. So we're going to be with him. And then he's going to go take care of business. And it says over here, it says, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. We have a geographic location. Okay. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. And half of it toward the south. You, you, you see what's going on right here? We have a geographic location. A geographical location of where he's going to be. And the saints will be with him when he, when he returns. He keeps saying he's coming with his saints. Okay, he's, he's, he's coming, him and, and his saints. He's coming with his saints, right? You read that. You read that in Jude. You read that. I mean, 10,000 of his saints, right? And in other places, it says even more, but, that, but that's okay. It's okay. We'll get to that. Okay? we get to that. Let's look at what some of this war may look like, right? What I want to do, let me go ahead and go to uh, Joel, Joel, right? Joel. So we're going to go, Joel, we're going to read a lot of this, right? Point out a couple things. We'll read a lot of it. Let's start at verse 1, okay? So, Joel chapter 2, or Yoel chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 1. It said, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess and a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So this particular army, this particular people that are going to be, that's going to raise up. It's going to be way different, right, than anything else before. Now watch this, verse 3. A fire, a fire devours before them, out in front of them, right? A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, in front of them, and behind them a desolate uh, wilderness. See, uh, the, the destruction that they're going to leave in their wake, right? So that's what we're looking at. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Listen to, listen to what's going on. Picture this in your mind. Get this in your mind's eye, please. Verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Remember, like, uh, I think, what, World War Z, stuff like that, when the zombies would be jumping up. Now, I'm not calling the saints zombies, but I'm just giving you a picture, okay, how powerful they're going to be. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to read 7 again. Watch. It says, they, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. They're going to be strong. They're going to have it together, right? Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and, and when, they shall, uh, when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Hmm. They shall not be wounded. When they get thrust through, they shall not be wounded. In our, in, in our case, if they get shot, it won't kill them. Okay? 
They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the walls, and they shall climb up upon the houses, and they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. We're looking at that, 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 that dreaded day of the Lord, aren't we? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide in it? Who can stand? Who can withstand all this, right? Verse 12. Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. He's telling us what we should be doing, right? 13. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of the evil, okay? Now, we're gonna to continue to read. I just wanted to soak in that even in all the, even when he has to do what he must do, he still is charging us to get our act together. Oh, don't just rain your clothes, rain your heart. Have a heart that's aligned with his. 14, we're gonna let the Bible speak. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering uh, unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the, the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Like he wants, the, the priest is talking about, you know, let us win this battle so that the heathen don't say, where's their God? They supposed to be serving this God. Where's this most high? Where's this Yeshua Hamashiach? Who is this guy? Right? Where is he? If they're winning, right? So the priests are, so the priests are saying, are praying to God saying, hey, you know, don't let this happen. OK, don't don't let don't let this happen is basically what they're saying so that the nations uh, won't rule over us. Right. In 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. What? Wait, what? He what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's read 18 again. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity for his people. So Israel it's not done. It's not done away with. Right. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. So, oh, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a big joke. You know, you know, you know, Israelites, Israel, we're just a laughing stock. You know, we don't got it together. We are all out of order. We don't get along. You can't trust each other. You know, all the, you know, all that stuff, right? We're all these bad reproaches, you know, all the little nicknames and the proverbs and the bywords and the, the shaking of the head and the tisk, tisk, tisk that everybody has for those who call themselves Israel. All, all, all that, that's going to be gone. That's going to be gone. They're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. They are the chosen people in that day. Now, for the most part, it'd be a little too late for them to realize that. But they're going to realize who are the people, who are the children of the most high. They're going to find that out, right? And what, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of, uh, well, let's go to 19 again. He says, yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied they're with me. I'm, I'm going to take care of you. I got you. You're going to have everything you need. Don't worry about it. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. So you went in that battle. And I will drop him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up. Because he has done great things. He did you, you did a little too much, right? We're supposed to get, you know, we're supposed to get a little bit of a correction, right? 
a little bit of corporal punishment. I, I we we know we understand that the Most High. Uh, yeah, he did these things to Israel, but the heathen, the Gentiles, they went too far. They furthered the affliction. Even when the Most High tell them to stop, oh, they don't want to stop. Because it feels so good being on the top. It's great being the king. They are the head, right? They, they're the head. They're, they're, they're the kings. They're Gentiles. They're other nations. They are on top. They are the head. Israel is the tail. We way at the bottom of societal totem poles, but they don't know being the king in their seat is more like the sword of Damocles dangling over their head. And at any moment, it is going to be lopped off when the Messiah returns with his army. In, 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 in 21, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Listen to what he's saying. The Lord will do great things. Now watch. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Right? So we, we, you're going to be okay, right? So the land's going to be okay. It's going to be nice and fertile. The animal will be okay. The animals, they're going to have what they need. Everybody's going to be okay. 23. Be glad, be glad then, now he's addressing the children, he's addressing us. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will <coughs> excuse me, cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. All right, so this is a time of renewal, a time of refreshing, right? So everything's going to be all right after he cleans this place up. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore you to the years that the locust has eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the and the palmer worm, my great army which I send sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. And that I am the Lord your God. Okay. I am the Lord. Yah I am Yahweh thy El. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into blackness or darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall the deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Okay. So when it's all said and done, he said, oh, everything is going to be okay. But let me warn you, it's not going to be pretty the whole time. You know how they say it's darkest before the dawn. It's going to look bad. It's going to look real bad before it gets better. It's going to look worse before it gets a lot better, right? That's what's going to happen. That is what's going to happen. So don't let any of these butter muffins out here sell you pipe dreams. Sell you the nicey, nicey, nicey. I mean, yeah, I can, I can teach you lessons on love and nice and all that, but will it prepare you? If this is what's coming, if war is coming, am I preparing you by soothing you? Our armies, and any of the armies of the world, any armies, it don't have to be the American army. And, and in the military of anywhere, do they just soothe the soldiers to get them ready? Did they go give them some mani petty so, so they can get ready for, so, for war? No. So I need, I need you to, I need you to 
be sober minded. I, 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 I need you to get it. I need you to allow this to sink in. So when it comes, should you be alive in that day, when it comes, you will recognize it. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds. Be prepared because what the most high, the Yeshua HaMashiach, he comes to see whom he may find so doing. So I just want to prepare you mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. That's all. It's a sobering message. Let's continue what we, what we have here. Okay, let's continue. So we, we, we read all this, okay? But let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 and verse 10. Isaiah 60 and verse 10. Because after this is all done, I mean, it's going <laughs> to... Um, we're going to be able to see what it feels like to be on top, right? Because none of us, unfortunately, listening to this, uh, this lesson right here, none of us were alive during the time of David or Solomon, right? So, so, so we don't know what it's like to live in a society, to live in your own country, in your own land, have your own sovereign king to rule over us, have, have, have all our priests, you know, the Levitical priesthood, to help us and guide us and rule over us. We, we, we don't know what that's like, right? But we're gonna see what it's gonna like, what it's gonna be like to be on top. Right? See, the way the Gentiles and other nations uh how they lead right now, you have, you know, you have um the Bilderbergs and Rockefellers and all this. You have you have like almost like Gentile royalty, right? You have a bunch of oligarchies, you have you have you you have a lot of um monarchies out there right you have peoples with what you know with um their, their 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 family heritage right they have inheritance you know you got you know sam walton with with sam's and and, and walmart and all that and i can i can go on and on and on you guys you, you guys get where i'm going right but where's our legacy Yeah, people that have, you know, multi-million, dare I say, billion dollar companies and they could just have, you know, nepotism and and and, and, and they and, and their family have generational wealth. What about you? What, what, what do you got? What, what, what did Israel do? You, what, what do you have? Where's the legacy? And I'm not talking about just money, whatever. I'm just talking about the idea of being on top. See, all the things that they have, we're supposed to. Something sim sim similar, right? And I'm, I'm not talking about just money. But all the things that they have, we're supposed to have that. But because, you know why I say that? Because remember, remember the first, first, first 15 verses in Deuteronomy 28? You're supposed to read that. You're, you're supposed to have all that. We will be lending to them, not them lending to us. And half the time, they don't want to lend to us anyway. But you get my point. That's what it is to be on top. That's what it's like being on top. That's what it's like, like Solomon being the most wisest person, the most wise in other countries and Kings and queens, you know, in, 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 including Sheba, coming to hear his and giving him great wealth just to hear some of the things he had to say. Let's continue. Isaiah 60. Let's start at verse 10. Look at this. What it says. It says, what, um, and the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls. So the sons of the strangers shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister unto thee. Hmm. Kings, important, powerful people from other nations will minister unto you. For in my wrath, I smote thee, but in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. So when I was mad, I smacked you around a little bit. Okay. So in my wrath, I was... You know, I was I was like 
Will Smith at the Oscars, but now I'm going to have favor on you. I'm going to have mercy. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles mm, and that their kings may be brought. For the nations and kingdoms that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So other nations, Israel, what what part, what, what part of the army do you want to be on? What, do you want to be part of it or you want to be against it? Because he's saying he's going to take care of Israel in the end. He, he said he's going to take care of that. What part, what, what part of this? What, I mean, what, what are we doing? Come on, Israel, what are we doing? Look, look what he said. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So they're going to serve thee. Okay? And just as a quick aside... I know these people that got this Israel only doctrine and all this other stuff. It's just ridiculous because this wouldn't even sound right. Right. If, 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 if everybody, everything's Israel. OK, everything's Israel. Now, it says the ones who don't serve you are going to perish. Right. OK, so that means somebody, somebody's going to make it. Somebody's going to fall in line of, of another nation. Right. So so they're going to serve. So anyway, that's just a quick aside. Right. So don't 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 listen to that doctrine there. But let's go back to Hazan or Revelation. Right. Revelation chapter two. Revelation chapter two. Let's let's look at this. OK. And it says over in 26, let the Bible speak, which says, and he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. Hmm. In verse 27 in Revelation two, it says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. OK, so he says he's going to give him power over the nation. But I mean, he's ruling it. Right. He's the king of kings. I mean, it's going to be other kings. Right. You know, I mean, he told the disciples, you are going to be sitting on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel and stuff. So there's rulership. There's protocol. There's going to be a job. What what are you signing up for this job? Are you enlisting? Are you enlisting into the army of God? Right. Where do you want to be? OK. But it's going to be a little bit more battle going on. Right. A little bit more battle. So we're going to go ahead and go to Zechariah We're going to go back to Zechariah. Let's look at it. 14. And we get there. We'll start at verse uh, one. Zechariah 14, verse one, the King James. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And, 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 and look at, look at, look at where he's going to be. And his feet shall stand on a, uh, stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now I'm going to drop down to verse nine. And verse 9 says, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. OK, no problem with that. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Ramon south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabitants in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hananiah unto the king's wine presses and men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction but jerusalem shall be safely inhabited verse 12 and this shall be the plague wherewith the lord will smite all the people that have fought against jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth gruesome Absolutely gruesome. Right. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult 
from the Lord shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Is it go time? Is it, is it go time to say, and Judah shall fight too? Because we're talking about last days type stuff, people. 14, and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Sounds like a paradigm shift here, a wealth transfer or a position transfer, you know, stop. We're going to stop being the tail and somehow, some way, the Lord's going to make sure that Israel is the head. Interesting. 15. He said, and so shall be the plague of the horse or of the mule, of the camel and of the ass and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Ooh, in the last day. So we got, wait a minute. So in the last days when he gets back and the king is here, when he's standing here and he's in New, and he's in New Jerusalem, in the kingdom, the other nations, the ones who fought against him at first, okay, because obviously that's not Israel. The ones who fought against him at first, they're going to have to come and do the Feast of Tabernacles? Huh. Okay, let's just read it one more time so you don't think I'm making it up. Okay, we know this is last day stuff. This hasn't happened yet, right? Um, and it says uh, in 18, And if the families of Egypt go not up and come not, and, the, okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to go back. Uh, uh, 16, 16. Here we go. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain, which means they don't eat, right? You don't eat. And if the family of, of, Jeru of, of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Hmm. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the, which is synonymous with bondage, and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Over and over and over, three times. You know, you got to keep this Feast of Tabernacles. You got to keep this Feast of Tabernacles. I don't care who you are. You need to come over here and keep this Feast of Tabernacles. Just like Jerusalem. The other nations got to do exactly what Jerusalem, what Israel does, right? The saints are already going to be doing it. We're already trying to do it. We're already trying to memorialize it. We're already trying to get in the habit of it. We're, are we doing it perfectly? Of course not. We're not in Jerusalem. But we are memorializing and trying to carry this thing out. If he chooses to put his name on a piece of property or something, then there you go. I mean, what? For 40 years, the, the, they were keeping the Feast of Tabernacles out in the wilderness and not Jerusalem, right? Then we don't have possession of Jerusalem right now, but we know all that's going to change. According to scriptures. Not according to my opinion. This is, I'm, we're just reading what it says. And he said, come he, get, come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Or else. This is what we're reading. You're reading it in your Bible too, right? Okay. Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2. Right? I'm going to read the first four real quick and then we're going to get a couple of other things, right? Isaiah 2, we're going to read the first uh, four verses, which says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. So when are we talking about? In the last days, right? It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. What? 
For out of Zion shall go forth the law, shall go forth the love, shall go forth the faith, shall go forth the law in the last days. And yet, some of you will let some of these butter muffins out there fool you into thinking that there is no law. What do you mean there is no law? In the last days, and it shall come to pass, and the law is going to come out of uh, come out of Zion. The law is come. Let's just read this. Uh, let me find out. All right. <laughs> Let's read that again. And he will teach us of his ways and he and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Hmm. And he shall judge among the nations, among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Why? Nation shall not lift up sword a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. Neither shall they learn war any more. I told you, it's going to get a little bad before it gets better. Because we are hard of learning. The people. Now, I know it's going to be the saints of the most high versus the wicked. Okay, just let me be clear. And it doesn't mean that all Israel... It, you know, it's righteous. OK, there's going to be some, there's there's a lot of unawakened, wicked Israel out there who are going to fall on the wrong side of this battle. Hey, what can I say? All we can try to do is give them the word and we can tell them repent for the kingdom is not. OK, that's, that's all, all we can do. Brothers and sisters, it's 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 going gonna, it's gonna to be real different in that day. Real different. It's going to look really bad. At first, and then it gets better. And I wanted to give you a picture. Of what, it, what what does it look like to you know to be the head, not to say well, first be on the most high side. And it's gonna turn this whole thing around. Let him set the order. Let him give out the instruction, and you and I follow it. That's that's all we got to do. Okay, so if we have the plan here. Well, let's just read the instructions. Let's just get an understanding and prepare ourselves. Let me give you just a little bit more. Isaiah 56 and 6. Isaiah 56 and 6. He says, also the sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his what? Servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take it whole of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Okay, now these people who figure things out, wake up and graft them or be, or be, be blessed enough to be grafted into Israel doing what Israel is, is doing. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so I didn't say Israel only. I just said Israel first. And eight, the Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, saith, yet will I gather others to him besides Israel, besides those that are gathered unto him. So others besides Israel. So yeah, other nations, you, you come in, but you got to come the right way. To the Jew first, to Israel first, then to the Gentile. Even Paul said, hey, boast not against the branches, the natural branches, because if he cast them out, what do you think he'll do to you? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go to uh, Isaiah 14. Okay, that was 56. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Okay, Isaiah 14. Doug, you don't want to do what, it, what, if you don't want to follow Israel, you don't want to, you know, take your place, take, get in position. You don't want to do that. Hey, it can go a little different from you. Isaiah 14, and we're going to start at one, verses one and two. It says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Does that sound like something's changing right there, right? Are you in your own land now? So it hadn't happened yet, right? And the strangers shall be joined with them. 
So non-Israelites will be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So they're going to be like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we're going to go with Israel and serve their God because, yeah, this is, this is better for us. Okay. And the people shall take them. Okay. The people, right? These, the strangers, they're going to take them, them, Israel, right? And bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for the servants, for servants and handmaids. Sound like you're on top now, huh? Because you don't have servants and handmaids of people of the other nations, right? And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Does that sound like trading places? Does that sound, sound like role reversal to you after it's all said and done? When the saints come marching in, when this is over. What does that sound like to you? You got the scriptures. You're, you're, you're reading it yourself. What does it sound like? This is going to be a whole, a change is coming. A change is coming. Whether you're asleep before he comes back, don't worry. If you, if, if you, if you wake up to life everlasting, you wake up to righteousness, you wake up to that glorified body, you'll see it. You'll still see it. Just know the plan. Just know what's going on. Right? Everything is set by the bounds of Israel, right? Everything. Because Israel's supposed to be, they're, 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 that's his bride. They're supposed to be ruling, right? Ruling righteously, right? Now, when you think about ruling, don't, don't think about the wickedness that has befallen Israel all these centuries, right? Don't, don't, don't think about that because that's not the kind of rulers Israel will be in the future. It will be righteous. It will be holy. It will be just. Brothers and sisters, I hope this was a, a sobering message for you, right? I just wanted to give you an idea. What, what, what will it be like? What will it be like? Does, 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 uh, is the most high a man of war? Is he a consuming fire? Will he have an army? What's the end game? What, what, what's the, what's the la last result? I mean, what, what's the final resolution to this whole thing? And that is the meek shall inherit the earth. The saints shall take back the kingdom and rule from Jerusalem. And Yeshua Hamashiach will be the king of kings, lords of lords. He will sit on top. He already told the disciples that they're going to be ruling and judging the 12 tribes, right? We know he's going to raise up David. David will be ruling. Moses will be ruling. This is this is whole resurrection, right? He'll be ruling. You heard the parables of, you know, uh, of the talents. And uh, you, you go rule five cities. You go rule 10 cities. And so he has order and protocol, all that. Are you trustworthy? Can you get in? Can you get into this army and do your job? Can you rule righteously? Can you follow your Messiah? Can you, can, can you do that? Can you follow the, or, or the orders? But he wants us to rule. If you're not going to be that abject humiliation like that. Whatever is done, whatever transpires in that day. Will be righteous. It may not look so good, but it'll be righteous. Because of whom is doing it. Because, because, because the one who is doing it, the one who is executing, the who's sending out the order. So this has been when the saints come marching in. I hope somebody, anybody, I've got some understanding for this lesson. So until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel. <laughs>